I'm going to fire up a Windows Forms application that I have the report viewer. Now, this was I, I kept this pretty simple. Um, so what I did, you know, I created a report in Windows Forms, and then I threw out the Windows Forms application. But this is a very simple app. It's just a very simple form. And on this form, I have, let me see, just, my resolution is a little low because I'm demoing. But on this form, we have the Ultra Report Viewer. It's part of the toolbox. Um, so, and what I did here is, if I click on the little smart tag, let me just copy this whole thing. So, let me just fire up Notepad. Just wanted to show everybody this. Let me see. Okay, it doesn't copy from in there, so a little thing with Visual Studio. Let me just do this. I'm going to go and fire up Windows Explorer. I just want to show everybody. See, what you could do with the report is there's several different ways you could include reports. And here we go. This is what I want to bring up. So you see right here what's going on. So here I have, here's, I have a folder on my hard drive somewhere. C column backslash work backslash reports. And here's a report I threw into that directory. So when I first started playing with the reporting product, I was assuming that the reports can only be embedded as a resource because that's how I learned how to do it before any documentation was available in the early days. But that's not the only way of going about this. You can just take the report files and dump them somewhere on a file system or maybe on a network or anything. Um, th there's, a lot of, there's a lot of ways you can handle it, but I think it's cool to just create the reports in whatever programming environment you want and then just take those files and dump them somewhere and share them with all your app users. Now I'm going to open this report, this whatever file.igr. I'm going to open it up with a text editor and let's take a look. So a couple of things to take a look at in this. So is it any surprise to anyone? It's, a, it's an XML file basically. That's what this is. And Infragistics takes this XML file and renders it into the cool report that we see. Now. A very important thing is part of the report needs to know is a connection string. So here's what here's like a, a um, an XML tag that explains basically the name of a, a data source. So one thing that I want to make sure that everyone knows is if you're going to share reports, make sure you have the same type of connection throughout all your apps and the same name or whatever. I mean, I just called it. I, I just left the default name so. You can mark me down for elegant, you know, an elegant solution for enterprise app development. But just to communicate the fact that have the same, you're gonna have to have the same type of connection throughout your various platforms available to you for this to work across platforms. Because here I have a Windows Forms app that I'm running, and I'm fetching this report in this file system here. And let's fire it up, and it runs. And here we go. Now I made the, you know it took me like literally like 10 seconds to make this report. So it looks like it took me 10 seconds. I didn't style it. I didn't put a label. I didn't put an image. But here it is, a Windows Forms application running the report that I made here. And again, because it's, on a, it's Windows based, um, I could zoom in and out. It's on my Windows form here. I could print it or export it rather you know, into PDF. And I could save it and then it loaded up. And then when I run it, you know, I can double click on the, the report that was created and then just view it as a PDF. So that's how this one works here. Um, now I'm going to close this guy out and let's fire up. I had a WPF app that I was playing around with as well. And by the way, that Windows Forms app has a connection string in the app.config that's also called SQL Data Source 2 and it's, and it's got the connection string for the Northwinds database. And guess what? Now we're in the WPF application. And again, there's nothing in here. It's just the main window. That's all it is. You know, there's nothing on here except for the report viewer. So here it is. If I if I show you the XAML, just the report viewer, nothing specific. And see, this is the reference to that file on my hard drive, essentially. That's what this is all about. It's going to reference that file in C column backslash work. And the actual um, viewer itself, I hard coded that. Now you're not going to hard code report names. That's you know that's not a good idea. But you can populate some kind of drop down. You could use MVVM and whatever pattern you like to provide like a dynamically changing list as 
as developers in your organization are creating reports and dumping them in a shared directory, um, the, po the list can get populated on demand, and then when end users click on it, then it'll load. So you could do something like that. This is just a simple example. So, and again, here's my, if I go to the, oops, app.config, here we go. So on my local computer, we have a SQL server running and telling it to go to the Northwinds database. Same thing, SQL data source 2. You know, my awesome naming convention, SQL data source 2. That's what it's using. And when I run this guy right here, it's going to pull that same report. So that same report shows up here. And again, I really put this together in like a few minutes, you know, just to kind of just communicate the basic of this. Now, and again, you create the reports in whatever platform you want, and then you could display them across platforms. So you have one report across all the different platforms that we support, and that's WPF, Silverlight, jQuery, Windows Forms, basically any of those platforms with the appropriate viewer. Infragistics. On the web at infragistics.com.